Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm your driver. All right, let's go. My life is nearly half over, and I have exactly Jack to show for it, except for a cheating girlfriend. I think we need to wrap this up. I'm breaking up with you. And $6,000 in gambling debt. The money you owe? I'm going to need it by midnight tonight, or you're dead. I need $6,000 by midnight tonight. There might be a little hope. His name is Roger Karos. Karos will be the end of you. Billionaire. Completely nuts, but he tips thousands. I need a driver, a confidant, a bag man, and a protector. I'm in. I'm sure you got nothing to worry about here. Are you completely flipped out? I drove Charlie Sheen for six weeks. Yeah. Who's he? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Limo? Took a little damage. Are you carrying a gun? I seriously can't talk about it. <laughs> You are going to jail. You are dead! All this weirdness that I got sucked into tonight woke me up. It's like the worse it gets, the better I am. I'm five steps ahead of the game. <laughs> you got Facebook, dude? Grab a cab, Yeezy. I'm busy. This is like a pretty bad trailer for what I'm hoping is at least a pretty good movie because Stretch has been on my radar for a while now because I'm a really big fan of a number of people who are involved with this film. For instance, front and center, Patrick Wilson. I'm so impressed with how he's been able to turn his career around. I mean, he kind of broke into the scene in a big way with little films like Hard Candy and Little Children opposite Kate Winslet, and it seemed like he was going to go somewhere, and then he got the Watchmen gig playing a night owl and that was supposed to be a big deal but that film never really found its audience and Patrick Wilson never really found his audience. Although uh, pretty late in the game for your usual actor he's been able to find a niche with the horror films that he's made so successfully. You know the Insidious films and then of course The Conjuring and that's all been with James Wan. Uh, he, you know so often we talk about an actor succeeding because they find the right director to team up with. DiCaprio and Scorsese, Johnny Depp, Tim Burton, the list goes on and on and I think definitely Patrick Wilson and James Wan. Uh, and now he's kind of going off on his own here, but he's taking the producer of the Insidious films with him, and that's Jason Blum, who I'm also a huge fan of. I discuss him a lot here on the show because I'm really impressed with the business model that Jason Blum has come up with. He lets uh, auteurs do what they want, and the trade-off is, is that they don't have a very big budget or salaries to work with, but, it, you know, they get to make the movie that they envisioned uh, without too much meddling from the, the Hollywood system, which I think has produced some great horror films. And also, it's produced Whiplash, which is a major awards contender, as I recently said in my review of it, one of the best movies I've ever seen. So I'm really keeping a close eye on Jason Blum, and to hear that he's going into, or at least trying to go into the comedy genre with this film, Stretch, I think is very exciting. Uh, but maybe Joe Carnahan, who's the director here, isn't the kind of guy who should be able to make the movie of his dreams, who shouldn't have any supervision or meddling. Because from what I hear of Smoke and Aces, I didn't see the film, but not that impressive. You know, not the not the full-blown Tarantino that I think it hoped to be. And this seems to have a little bit of shades of Tarantino in it, but I'm not sh I'm not quite sure if it's going to, to reach it. As I said, I hope it's just at least pretty good. From this trailer, I think really good might be out the window. But uh, another problem I have with this trailer is that I think it isn't uh, highlighting some of the best points of this project. Now, if you want absolutely no spoilers, and if you trust in this trailer that you shouldn't know these aspects yet, bow out now of this trailer review. But what I think they should have capitalized on are, are two things. First of all, Ed Helms, the guy with the pencil-thin mustache in the limo, he's supposed to be a ghost of a former uh, co-worker that's haunting Patrick Wilson. That's a pretty cool idea. I don't understand why that isn't played up in the trailer or even introduced in the trailer. Then the guy who's back is to camera who says he doesn't know who Charlie Sheen is, that's Chris Pine. Chris Pine is trying to also go into comedy in a big way, although he's very comedic as uh, Captain Kirk in the Star Trek films that he's made. Uh, but he's in Horrible Bosses too, and he's doing an even more comedic turn here. Why isn't why they wouldn't they not show his face? I think it's really a big asset for this film to see Chris Pine take on this kind of zany character role. And then also, actually, one other thing: uh, the guy that he's going to work for in the white, who's like the scary guy, who gives him the brief briefcase. That's James Badge or James. Badge Dale or James Dale Badge, I forget the exact 
order of his names off the top of my head. And the guy needs more exposure because he's that guy you say you see in a movie and you go, oh yeah, that guy, I like that guy. And he's coming off of a couple of big movies where he had small roles like World War Z, uh, a couple of other things. And I think he's very, very good. And so this is an exciting role for him and also for chance for him to do something a little different. And he's just in the shadows here. And I think it would be better to be like, look who we have here and we're letting him do some exciting stuff. So weird trailer. I think it doesn't show off the movie to the best of its uh, capabilities, uh, but I'm hoping this is going to be a good film because I'd love to see it succeed for so many of the people involved. But I'm curious, what do you think of the trailer? Are you a Joe Carnahan fan? Maybe you loved Smoke and Aces and you can't wait for more. Uh, what do you think of Patrick Wilson? Do you believe that he can move into comedy after succeeding so well in horror? And how about Jason Blum? Do you think that his formula that's worked so well in horror films and has done quite well even in the award circuit would also work here in comedy. Write your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning into my review, and you can check out some more episodes right now.